Well, hello, Internet. Today I'm going to show you how to make a featured content slider for your website or a photo gallery or anything. And I'm not just going to show you how to make this one that's on the screen. I'm going to show you how to style it so that you can make any type of featured content gallery you could ever want. And I'm using the Coda slider as a basis for this guy. Yes, this is what it starts out like, and this is what I'm going to turn it into. So all you need to do is download all the code for the Coda slider. It's 100% free, and there is a link for it underneath of this video. So let's get into the coding. Okay, so I got the Coda slider downloaded, so I'm going to open up all the files I'm going to need. And you can do this in just any old text editing tool. I'm using Text Wrangler, but Notepad++ works as well. And inside of this guy, I'm going to get index.html. I'm open that up and I'm also going to go in here into the JavaScripts folder inside of the Coda slider. I'm going to download or open up jQuery Coda slider 2.0.js and I'm also going to open up my style sheets which is where most of the editing is going to be done and that's Coda slider 2.0.css. This is going to be a two-part tutorial. First I'm going to show you how to work with index.html so open that up on the screen. It's going to be real simple. So here it is, and we're going to scroll down. We're going to leave pretty much everything exactly the same, but the first thing I want to get rid of is Coda-Slider up here, and it's real simple. Just highlight it and delete it. Okay, so that's gone. Then I want to put our little wrapper div around this, and if you don't know anything about divs or HTML or CSS, I provide links to tutorials on those two subjects. You should definitely learn them before you continue. So I'm going to create a div. Class is equal to, and I'm going to call it page wrapper, and it's just going to surround the whole entire featured content slider on the screen. And then, of course, I'm going to want to close off this page wrapper. So I'm going to go way down here to the bottom, put a closing div page wrapper. Copy this. And this is just a comment. End of page wrapper. And you could easily just copy this code and use exactly what I have here on the screen if that works out better for you. And the way the Coda slider works is everything is contained. You just leave everything the way that it is. And you're even going to leave panel one inside of here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put everything that you want to show up in your slider inside of paragraph tags. Now, since we're also going to be putting images inside of here, you could style this to like regular HTML as long as you keep your heights and it's properly set up. What we're going to do is we're going to create a div inside of here and this is how the maker of the Coda slider says to do things. And I'm going to define my height because all of my images are 320 pixels high. So I'm going to define that inside of here right like that. And then of course I'm going to put a closing div underneath of here. And then inside of these paragraph tags I'm going to put links to the big giant images that I want to show up. And I have all those saved inside of the images folder. Here are all of them. And here you can see them real big here on the screen. So this is going to be my thumbnail and this is going to be my main image. And eventually I'm going to turn this into a WordPress site. So I'm just going to go inside of the paragraph tags inside of this and go image source is equal to. And then since I have it in my images folder, I'll put images forward slash and then I have something called T and S dash FC for featured content and it's a ping file. Close off the image tag and that's all I need to do. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of this and just keep reusing this over and over again. So make my life easy. I'm going to copy all this and then come down inside here, paste that inside of there, paste that inside of there, and paste that inside of there. So now I can change all of my images inside of here. So here I'm just going to come in and I'm going to put in a different image and this one's called Legend Valve. Scroll down and change this one to Sloan and then scroll down and turn this one into Zern. So those are just my big images that are going to show up on the screen. Then what you want to do is if you want these thumbnails to show up down here. Well, you just have to create a new div and put those thumbnails inside of it. So right before the Coda slider closes off, we're going to create a new div. We're going to put all our thumbnails inside of it. Div, class, and you can make this anything you want. I'm going to call it nav thumbs, because this is going to be my navigation tool. And then close that off. Throw in my little comment there. And then with the Coda slider, you have to use a very specific sort of styling here. So we're going to go a class is equal to and then you have to put in X trig. And what this does is it allows for these panels up here, whenever you click on them, they're going to automatically activate the thumbnails. It's called cross linking, but you don't need to worry about that. And I'm going to say this one is my current thumb, which means that it's going to be highlighted. So I'm defining two classes instead of just one. And then this is important also, H reference, and you're going to have to put number one, since this is your first link in an REL is equal to, and you're going to put coda inside of quotes, dash slider, dash one. And this is also going to be the same every single time. And I'm going to go image, source, and then I have to provide a link to the source for the thumbnail. So this is going to be images again, 
and then T and S dash FC dash 150 by 150 dot ping because that's the name of it. And I gave it this specific name because eventually this is going to be turned into a WordPress theme. And then I need to define my height is equal to, and I'm going to say 50 pixels in this situation, and my width is also going to be equal to 50 pixels. And I'm going to close off that image tag and then close off the link for it. That's pretty much all I got to do. And I have to make sure that these are all lined up right. So I did TNS and then I did Lengen, Sloan, and Zern. So I just have to come in here and copy this and make more of them. And basically all I need to change here is make this a two and then I need to change my thumbnail. So this is going to be Legend Valve. Copy that, paste that inside of here. This needs to be changed to three because it's going to be my third link. This is going to be changed to Sloan. And I also want to get rid of these current thumbs because we don't want them all to be highlighted whenever it first comes up. Change this to four and then change this to Zern. And that's all I need to change for the HTML. And just for fun, let's see what it looks like. Reload. And you can see there's an image inside of there and we're going to fix up everything else as we go along. So now what I'm going to do is I'm done with index.html. I'm going to jump into the jQuery JS file that we opened up previously and I'm going to come in here and make some changes to that. All right, so we scroll down and here's where we're going to be making a lot of different changes. Now, do I want this to automatically adjust height whenever it jumps from frame to frame? Well, maybe you do, but I don't. I want this to stay consistent. So I'm going to come in here and say false. Now, do I want to set up auto slide so it slides like you see it doing on our left hand side of the screen? Yes. So I'm going to change that to true. And then let's say I want to auto slide it faster like you see it going there. I'm going to change that to 4000. That's basically change it every four seconds. And then I don't want the left and the right to show up with the arrow tools like you see right here. See, it says left and right. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to get rid of it. So I get rid of those two things. The arrows are still going to show up. And then you can do all kinds of other different transitions. Like if you want to change the transition from frame to frame, you would change this guy down here. And in the code, I provide some comments that give you some different options that are available to you. So you can slide it at different speeds if you prefer to do that. Now, what I'm going to want to do is, as you can see here, as it is changing frames, it is also highlighting different thumbnails. So let's make this bigger. See, as it changes frames, it's going to automatically switch to these different thumbnails. Now, the original guy that you see here on the screen also does that. See, as it changed right there. So what I want to do is I want to hook up these changes that are occurring in these panels up here into changes that occur with my thumbnail. Well, I'm going to use the code that automatically is changing those to come in here and instead change my thumbnails. So I'm going to scroll way, way, way down here and first set it up so that when the left arrow is clicked, like you see this guy, see it's going to automatically jump over here. Well, in my situation, I'm going to set it up so that it automatically is going to change the thumbnail. So let's jump back into my jQuery code. And if you have the ability to do a find, what you're going to want to do is type in left arrow. That should find it. And here you say left arrow click. We're going to use this as a guide right here. And if you don't understand jQuery, I'm going to kind of give you an understanding of it. Basically, what this is saying is it wants me to use the slider and look for all of the siblings of Coda Nav. Coda Nav is what surrounds these guys right here. So in essence, what it's saying is select all of these different divs that are inside of Coda Nav. Then I want to find the one that has the current class attached to it. If I jump over into this, here instead I used current thumbs. See, there's two different classes defined inside of here. So I'm going to look for the link that has current thumb as a class. Jump back into the jQuery. And I want to remove the class current, which means it's not going to be focused on. And then what it wants to also do is to find the parent UL that surrounds all of this. This is a list item right here. So there's a UL that surrounds every one of these guys. And then I want to find the last link. So in essence, what this is going to do is if you are on panel one and it clicks on this, it's going to automatically select the last panel. See how it did that right there? So if we're on panel one and the left arrow is clicked, it's going to automatically jump over here to panel four. So that's what this guy's doing. And then it's assigning that class to it. All right. So I'm going to use that as a guide to create my own. Now the div that surrounds my personal thumbnails is called nav thumbs as we saw previously. And if you didn't remember that, just skip back and watch that part again. So I'm going to go nav thumbs right like that. And then I'm going to say, I want to find the link that is of the class current thumb. I'm using what's above to redesign this. And I'm going to say remove class current dash thumb. And then I want to say that I also want to select the parent of that thumbnail 
which is going to be nav thumbs again. And then I want to find the last link that's in contained in there. And then I want to add my class current thumb to it, right like that. And that's going to do it for me. So what I'm doing here, if we jump back into index, here's nav thumbs. And I'm saying that I want to find out who currently has current thumb assigned as a class. And I want to remove that class. And then I want to jump down here to this A. This is the last link inside of nav thumbs. And I want to assign current thumb to that guy. In case you don't get it, what it's doing is it's changing this thumbnail right here so that whenever I click on that, it automatically jumps over and highlights this thumbnail. And we continue to do that over and over and over again. So that's cool. And this will work. And then what we're going to do in essence is copy again what is going on here, but we're going to change some of the little definitions inside of here. And we can copy this and just make some changes based off of how the slider is already currently working on the screen. So we're going to be looking for nav thumbs just like we did before. And then we're going to find the current thumb and remove the class current thumb from it. And then we're going to select the parent. And then what I want to do is change the find function inside of here. Pretty much everything else is going to be the same. Well, as you can see here, current panel is constantly being changed by the code slider code. So what it's going to do is it's going to tell me what the current panel is that I'm currently on. All I need to do is just come inside of here and use that value to decide which thumbnail should be highlighted. So I'm going to say I want to select a link and it's going to be the nth child inside of nav thumbs. And then to come in here, put plus sign and go current panel, which is going to tell me which panel is currently highlighted and then close that off just like that. And now what we're going to do is we need to make the right arrow work. So we're going to use the code that we used up here before. Copy that. We're basically going to have to change one little thing inside of here. So let's paste that inside of there. And again, we're going to select the div named nav thumbs. We're going to find the current thumb. We're going to remove the current thumb class from it. We're going to select the nav thumbs div that surrounds everything. And in this situation, we want to select the first instead of the last. And what this guy's going to do is it's going to work for this. So if this is the current thumb and you click on the right arrow, see it jumped over here and highlighted Zern. So we're going to fix that by putting in first instead of last. And everything else can be left exactly the way it is. And then to handle for all of the other situations that will occur with the right arrow clicks, we're going to copy this code, we're going to scroll down here after the else statement, and paste that inside of there. And nothing else needs to be changed there. That's going to work. So now our left arrow and our right arrow all work. Now what we have to do is define what's going to happen when any other external triggers occur. And if you want to find that part of the jQuery code, just type in external triggers and go next. And there it is. And this is when any changes at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for the slider where it's changing all of these different things inside of here. And we're going to paste our code inside of there that we just used exactly the same code. And it again is going to work for everything. And then to make this work for the auto slide inside of this guy again, you're going to type in auto slide next. Come in here, paste our code in again, exactly as we last did it. And then everything's going to work there. And that is all the changes that need to be done with the JavaScript. And let's see what it looks like. Probably a mess because the CSS code isn't working right. A little bit messy, but in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to fix everything up and it will look exactly like what you see here on the screen. And you're going to learn how to make pretty much any other type of featured content tool that you'd ever want to make. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.